This spring, I got to go to a conference that I've been to for six or seven years. It's a technology conference, and every year there's a couple keynote speakers, usually very dry. They lose my attention. Um, this year, Dr. Yang Zhao was the keynote speaker, and he grew up in Beijing, and he's a professor in Oregon. And his speech was the most inspiring thing I've heard in maybe my whole career. Um, he talked about you guys finding jobs after college. He talked about character building. He talked about everything that doesn't include a grade sheet. And one of the things that he said in his speech, which really hit home to me, is this sentence. If you need to be managed, you are not employable. You guys are going to go as students to get degrees. And if your degree is in PR, and you're hired by a company, and you say, well, what do you want me to do? Well, that's your job. You need to figure it out. That's why you have the degree. And we're finding that only 5% of college students graduating have those skills to go into jobs and do what they were taught to do in college. Dr. Ng Zhao talked about these different characteristics. None of them include a grade. And I have to preface that but this whole speech and this whole talk. And everyone said this. Not one speech tonight has been about grades. It's been about thinking outside the box. And so I was so inspired by his speech that that Monday I spoke which I thought was going to be 10 minutes with my marine bio class. And then the bell rang, and I realized for 45 minutes I talked about Dr. Yang Zhao. I bought his book a day later, and I've been invested in it ever since. And these are the things that you guys need. This is character to find jobs, passion, creativity, alertness to opportunity, confidence, global competency, uniqueness, empathy, risk-taking, and problem-solving. But today I'm going to focus on creativity. The definition has been researched for 50 years. Uh, it's a completely complex definition. It uses right brain thinking, left brain thinking, convergent thinking, divergent thinking. And I'll get into more of that in, in, in later in the slides. But creativity is something that I think every one of us that's talking tonight is, is kind of the backbone of our talks. This is something that we need to teach. This is something that we're not teaching. And it's something that we may not have time to teach if all we are worried about are these standardized tests. This was a study that was done in, George Land was a, a researcher that did this study in 1968. And he surveyed 15, no, 1,600 children at the age of five. He gave them a test that was developed by NASA to test for creativity. And he found that 98, if you look at that top bar, 98% of five years old t um, scored at the genius level for creativity, the genius level, five years old. You enter school at five years old. So he followed those children, and he averaged them again when they were 10 years old. He tested them with the same test. Their creativity went down to 32%. 32%, that's a very significant drop. And then he followed them for five more years, and when they turned 15, he, their, their um, creativity went down to 10%. What is going on? The same scientist, around 1992, his study was published in 1992, surveyed 280,000 adults, and only 2% scored at the genius level of creativity. Why is our creativity going down? Well, I have no child left behind. I have raised to the top. I have all these standards that I have to abide by in my classroom. I might have said the word regents 350 times today. I'm, I have seven days till my kids take a Regents. And this year, I get a letter grade. So their number becomes my number. And it's all about numbers, right? So why is creativity going down? Um, Dr. Yang Zhao compares our, our education system to a sausage, sausage factory. And he says that we have all these different types of meat. And, and they'll have their strengths and their weaknesses. When you're five, you have all these different creativities. You can, you know, your strengths and your weaknesses. And when you go through the school system, everybody is expected to do the same thing. Everybody is expected to do it the same way. And your output is like sausage. It's homogenous and it looks the same. Every bite tastes the same. And that's not who you are. You all have your strengths. You all have your weaknesses. And you have, and, and, and should that be tested on a standardized test? So I said this already, but 5% of college grads leave with the skills to be employable. And he called it being an entrepreneur. And he said that it's more than just being an entrepreneur and creating your own business, but it's finding problems within your infrastructure and going and finding the problem and then finding the solution to it, for it. And that takes a creative mind. You have to be able to think outside the box. 
95%, he says, feel entitled to a job. I know that when I graduated college, I, I didn't feel stress. Um, I didn't feel stress in high school. Uh, I didn't worry about tests. Um, I don't remember the stress that my students are feeling. I never knew any of my friends that had to be hospitalized or medicated for anxiety. Um, students that just couldn't finish ELAs in third grade. Some kids were hospitalized. A lot of kids had stomach aches. I don't remember that. I, I love school and I enjoy school. And my teachers inspired me. And I think that's why I became a teacher. If I hated it and I felt stressed, why would I choose that as my profession? But 95% of college graduates feel that they're entitled to a job because they have a degree. As a teacher, I mentor student teachers. And I have to say, they come to me, what do you want me to teach tomorrow? Can I have your PowerPoint? Show me what your test looks like. How about you figure it out? You're teaching ecology. Run with it. Take a risk. Do whatever you want. And I think the, I think the, the reason why creativity is shut down, not only just the standards, is we are scared to take risks. And, and we need to be OK. It's OK to fail. And you learn from your mistakes. So you have to be able to take a risk. Forbes put out um, research that said 6% of college grads are not finding jobs in their field. I lived with 10 people in college. Three of us were education majors. Seven were communication majors. Three of us found jobs. One became a flight attendant. The rest are professional waitresses, some till today. And so why is that? And in the article, they listed the same characteristics that Dr. Yang Zhao wrote in his book and spoke about. Students don't have passion when they graduate, that 95%. The people that are presenting here, you guys are part of the five. But 95% are, I'm, I'm, you are, obviously, but they, you're not passionate about what your degree's in. Um, you're not willing to take risks. You think that you're just going to get a big paycheck, that you're entitled to a job, you're entitled to benefits with your job, and you don't want to put in the hard work to know what it takes to get a job. And beyond all, you're not creative enough to solve the problems that our prior generations have created for you. Richard Florida is an economist that I've read a couple of his papers. And he says that there's a rise in the creative class. Some people doubt him. But he said there's a rise in this creative class. Steve Jobs, he's a great example. He created um, Apple. Right? And he's built it to what it's become. Mark Zuckerberg with Facebook. It's, it's you know, now worth millions or billions of dollars. These are not factories anymore. In the United States, we are not a factory producing country. We are an entrepreneur country. And believe it or not, we're actually number one in creativity. We're above China and Japan in creativity. They're just a little behind us. They beat us in math. It's OK with that. But we beat them right now in creativity. Um, we also now are establishing more Common Core, so maybe that will go down. I don't know. Um, but he said there's a rise in the creative class. And when we had a recession, the creative class is replacing the blue collar jobs. And he said that while the, everyone during, during the recession, there was actually 3 million jobs produced for this creative class, while the blue collar jobs lost 6 million jobs in that same time period, 2001 to 2010. Ten, 6 million jobs. I know a, a, a school district in this county that just gave pink slips to 60 teachers. 60 teachers. If my department loses one, it will incredibly impact my class. Okay, and so, you know, our, uh, and then at the same time, this creative class's wages went up 4.4%, while the blue collar job wages went down 4.6%. IBM. Um, to be creative, a lot of people think that it involves technology, and part of it is, and, and, and part of it doesn't. You have to think outside the box. Sometimes that technology helps with that. But IBM obviously is a big company. Um, technology is expanding. Everything's becoming interwoven. Uh, and so for what they did is they did a study where they, they surveyed um, 1,500 global CEOs, as you can see. And they all ranked creativity as their number one character. They're looking for their leaders in their buildings. They need people to be able to be innovators, to think how to solve these problems of all these systems and technology being compatible, interconnecting. You've got Apple. You've got PC. You have all these different scripts. How can they be compatible so that our clients don't leave us? It's a big problem in the technology world. Creativity is the characteristic they think that's going to solve that problem. I love Google, um, as Chile and I are king and queen Google of, of Clarkstown North. And we had the opportunity to, to go to Google this year in April to their headquarters. And what I love about that company is, well, there's a million things I love about that company. But one of them is there's, a, there's no separation between the teacher and the engineer that creates the product for education. And that's why we embrace Google at this school. Google has a philosophy of 80-20. 
And I love this philosophy, and, I, and I'm, I'm telling you now, next year in Marine Bio, this is the class I'm going to take this, this, this philosophy. 80% of the hours a Google engineer um, puts in for Google is for Google stuff. 20%, they're allowed to work on creative projects on their own. And sometimes they find problems, maybe a problem that educators are having with Google Docs, and that's what they spend 20% 20, 20 of their time on. These tw they're called 20% projects. Sometimes they work individually. Sometimes they work in groups of so certain people working on the same idea. And they're not usually in, they, they, they aren't usually adopted by Google, but sometimes they are adopted by Google, and that's how we got Google News, and that's how Gmail came about, was from a 20% project. Um, I love this idea. And in Marine Bio, I don't have state standards, and I don't have an AP at the end, and I don't have a Regents at the end. And that's why it's my favorite class. And if I, if I want to spend a week going on the D-cell plant that's being built in Haverstraw, I have the freedom to do that. I have the freedom to allow my kids to create and imagine and write and do the things that they want to do with my curriculum. Next year, I think I'm going to take every fifth day, I'm going to make it a 20% project. Do something that you want to do. Make it related to the ocean, obviously. But make sure that it's something that you're interested in. Because why are we forcing them to show them how this is the way you solve this problem? No, they might have a different way of solving a problem. How can I keep creativity in my classroom? Well, it's a little bit of a yin and a yang. Um, like I said, it deals with the right brain, it deals with the left brain. You have to be able to have new ideas. Okay? You have to, that's the creative component of it. But, the, but you also have to be able to analyze those new ideas. Just because you have an idea, it may not work. You have to have the background to analyze your ideas to see if they're efficient. You have to think outside the box, which is divergent thinking. You have to think of things that haven't been thought of before. But then you have to have content. You have to have logic. So creativity is not the end-all, be-all. I know that I'm saying that. But it's part of the big problem. But we can't teach it at the expense of content. If Einstein didn't understand the, what he understood about physics, he wouldn't have, have, have you know, made his discoveries. And so content is important. Creativity is just as important. And the two together are how you guys are going to learn how to solve the problems that your parents and my generation created for you. Creative thinking skills are imagining, experimenting, discovering, elaborating, testing solutions, and being able to communicate them, maybe articulately, maybe in writing. But you have to be able to do all this. Um, teachers can do this. And, and it's starting from, you know, me and science, I, I mean, experiment, I have that down. Okay? But I look at this and I say, okay, I can do this. I can elaborate. How many kids elaborate? I can test solutions. I can have them communicate orally and through lab reports or writing. But sometimes it's just as simple as asking, what if this would have happened? Looking at history, well, what if this wouldn't have happened? How do you think this country would have been today? And it's getting them to think outside the box and apply the content that they learned throughout the year on a different scale. Dr. Zoe said in 2001, not at the, um, not, this is a paper I read, this is not when I saw him speak. Schools have to prepare students to invent jobs and not find jobs. He's very big on you guys becoming entrepreneurs. And if you look at our biggest industries today, they were self-created industries. You may not find a job in your field. 60% of people don't. And so is it something that you're going to have to invent? You're going to have to be creative. Uh, my sister's friend wanted to, hated her job. She worked in the city. She wanted to move back to Pennsylvania. She went to a company that she saw a problem, no alliance to this company, and said, this is the problem I'm thinking you're having. This is how I'm going to solve it. I think you should hire me. They resisted. We obviously have budget times. They had to figure out that. But they, she persisted and persisted, and they gave her that job. That took creativity, and that took a huge risk. She quit her job before she got the other one. But that might be the mindset that you guys have to have. I am um, going to come back to that slide. But when I, when I um, so, spoke to my students for what was supposed to be 10 minutes and ended up being 45, um, I ended with this. Become part of the passionate and creative producers. In school, you guys, cr you guys consume a lot and you regurgitate it all back on our regions. And that's not high level thinking, that's not creative thinking. But that's the thinking that's gonna get me my A that I get this year, hopefully, as a teacher. Unfortunately, you guys need the skills to become producers and not just consumers. And by all means, become creative producers and be not, do not be that entitled consumer. Thank you.